What is building a PC worth? What even is a build fee? And should you include a build fee in your next sale? I wanna answer each of these questions in this order because I'm asked them quite a bit by viewers in this channel and in the context of gaming PCs. So let's get started. Thermal Grizzlies Carbonop Pads offer peace of mind, ease of installation, and industry standard performance in a market crowded with mediocre thermal compounds. Our own testing confirms that they conduct heat appropriately and form a sufficient bond with the dye or IHS and cooler. They're much cleaner than paste solutions and can be reused as many times as you'd like. They're also extremely consistent, that's my favorite part, which is why we use them for CPU cooler testing. Check them out via the link below. First up, what's a fair build fee? And you'll find that I'll be periodically referencing my own personal experience with the used market. I was a heavy flipper only a few short years ago, and it's, uh, that's actually what it's, uh, it's allowed me to finance my young channel at the time. See, when I was too small to be noticed by the big companies for review embargoes and PC builds, which is understandable, I had to buy everything myself. But a broke college kid can't afford to build multiple PCs for the purposes of reviewing and benchmarking. So I invested. $500 into my first ever gaming PC, my first ever official PC build for myself, I should say, and I ended up making a few videos about it. I flipped it for a small profit and then reinvested those earnings into a different system. The rest is history. But that's how I pushed through inventory behind the scenes without a lot of upfront capital. It just, I didn't have enough money to, to go out and buy three or four systems and test. It just made no sense to me financially. So let's consider that first build of mine. It had a Core i3-4150, a GTX 750Ti, 8 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte hard drive, and a pretty cheap case. Today wouldn't fetch more than around a couple hundred bucks, but at the time these parts new came out to around $500, actually almost 500 bucks exactly. So how much did I sell it for? I'll tell you straight up, I sold it for about 550 bucks. I initially had it listed for 600 and took 550 because it was one of the only offers I had gotten in a few days. And this is where it can get a bit dicey. The truth is there is no set in stone fair build fee. It's totally up to you. Now I don't suggest you ask double the PC's value for obvious reasons, but a small markup never hurt anyone. And, and let's face it, time is money. Chances are the person buying your pre-built either doesn't have the time to build it his or herself, or doesn't have the time to watch a few YouTube videos and figure out how to build it his or herself. Either way, that time saved is worth something to them, and they'll pay, more than likely, a small premium for that time saved. My magic number is usually around 10%. Typically, more expensive builds require more time for assembly. This is especially the case for custom loot builds, which I don't usually recommend you buy used, but anyway. Using a percentage allows this value to scale according to that labor, that input time. You're also taking a larger risk because building more expensive systems requires more capital up front, and that's worth something as well, depending on who you ask. So if a build costs, say, $800 to assemble, charge around an $80 build fee. You could round this to 100, that's fine, not a huge deal. That's my advice anyway. It doesn't come across as greedy, but it also shows that you valued your time. Heck, some folks might not even bother pricing things out, only to realize that you've marked the build up a bit. And, and that shouldn't be an excuse to try and rip someone off, but if you're doing this as a hobby or to push inventory, you don't want to develop a reputation of, I don't know, being expensive and shady. Now, many people tend to think this 10% rule, which isn't really a rule, but more or less a, a guideline, let's say, applies to even old systems. And we've covered this in a few of our scam and ripoff videos you can check out in this playlist. If your system was built back in, say, 2011, uses an FX processor, you shouldn't be charging a build fee. At this point, you're competing with newer hardware with better price to performance ratios, and any price increase over fair market value will place you further behind the curve. It's okay to list a PC slightly above your bottom dollar, in fact, I, I encourage that to uh, some extent at least, but don't hold your system hostage over a build fee, especially when it's that old and you're trying to get rid of it. It's just not worth it, and the, the quick sale, especially for older hardware, is always my sure bet. It, it's already difficult enough to sell used systems in, you know, even for fair market value, thanks to the excellent value products like AMD Ryzen processors that are out now. So the quicker the sale, in my view, the better. But for those of you still wondering why I brought up a 10% build fee, or for those who don't think that I did a good enough job justifying this figure, I wanna put something into perspective for you. And this is something that uh, I don't talk about very much because it, it's certainly subjective. It depends on where you live, uh, and it also depends on the occupation in which you juxtapose this to. 
But the median U.S. salary in the U.S. is somewhere in the ballpark of $50,000 per year. We look at the median instead of the mean in this case because the mean accounts for outliers, usually the upper 1% of earners, positively skewing the average to somewhere around 60 grand. But $50,000 per year comes out to around $25 or so an hour, which is certainly a respectable hourly wage. Most experienced PC builders only require a few hours at most to assemble a rig, so you're looking at somewhere between $50 and $100 bucks in build fees, assuming this median salary. And I think that's reasonable. I mean, honestly, charging a bit less is probably the safer bet, but if we, if we think about it, right, discussed a bit earlier as well, more expensive builds often, with custom loops and the like, tend to require a bit more time to assemble. So the percentage that we use, the 10% percentage, actually scales according to your labor input. But what really drives me insane is when I see PC ads on Facebook, OfferUp, LetGo, or wherever, that's marked up by well over 50%. If the parts in the rig add up to around $1,000, let's say, and you decide to list for $2,150, you're either trying to scam someone into believing that your parts are worth way more than they should be, or you're valuing your time at several hundred dollars per hour, which is outrageous and stupid. Building PCs is easy. I hate to break it to some of you guys. Ultra custom rigs, sure, those require a certain degree of skill and precision, charge a bit more for heavy custom work. But if your rig requires no specialization of any kind and only consists of standard components, maybe like an AIO, uh, and I don't know, that's probably the most complex part of the installation, you shouldn't be charging hundreds of dollars per hour. That's well into doctor or lawyer pay, and people go to school and train for years to earn those salaries. And they're doing much harder work than you are, to be frank. Case in point, I've seen plenty of kids in even elementary school build PCs successfully, but I have yet to see a 12-year-old successfully pull off a heart transplant. We're on two different planets here. Yes, building a PC can be super exhilarating, right? The first time around. And it's okay to be proud of your work, but let's be honest, there's really nothing inherently special about being a PC builder. It's like Lego, just more expensive. I've seen so many ads where people try to pass off their PC building work as being extremely premium, and it's often a means to an end. If you can convince a buyer that, I don't know, the work that you did was intense and time-consuming and specialized, you can justify a higher asking price. And I think that's just being dishonest, plain and simple. So at a 10% build fee, you're saying, hey, I could have done other productive things with this time that may have earned me around a median salary, but I chose to do this instead, and that's all I'm asking you to cover in addition to the components of themselves. It's a level-headed approach, I think, and I've yet to see anyone complain personally about it when it comes to client-based or new systems. Speaking of which, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, you build systems, can you build a system for me? But uh, no, because I don't wanna have to ship the system, and shipping is a totally different animal, which I won't cover in this video. Uh, if you want me to build you a system, I recommend you live close to me, somewhere we can meet, talk about the parts. You can bring me the parts, and then you can come pick up the PC when it's built. That's really the only exception. If you live in the Orlando area, maybe we can talk about it. Send me a DM on Facebook or uh, message me on Twitter. So what do you think? If you live in the US and flip PCs occasionally, or maybe just actually have a business set up, what do you charge for a build fee? Just ballpark it. Do you agree with the things I've said here? I'm also curious as to how this varies on a cultural level. If you live somewhere other than the US, maybe, is PC building looked at any differently? I mean, I could see availability, let's say, playing a role here. If parts are less attainable, the building aspect could be looked at in a more premium light, so you might charge a bit more for it in your currency. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you've experienced in your area. Either way, I appreciate you watching this far into the video, and I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.